Hello everyone, welcome back to my YouTube channel. I hope that you are taking care of yourself, because if not, that'll be trouble. Today we are back with my favorite series here on this channel, and that is our Celebrity Book Club. This time around, we are going to be focusing on someone who is, in fact, a prettier Jesus. Of course, it's Lord, my favorite musician, accurately named because I would quite literally form a religion just to worship her. I do appreciate, that's kind of ironic, when <laughs> there's quite literally a song on her new album that says, if you're looking for a savior, that's not me. And respectfully, Lord, <laughs> I'm going to ignore that because I think this woman is fantastic. She has me in a chokehold. I would listen to her singing her shopping list. And actually the night before I went to university, I went to see her live and it was just the most amazing experience. I don't mean to be dramatic, but it was transcendental. I said it. And ultimately, I think that she's one of the best songwriters of our generation. And so, of course I want to read what she reads. I've been eagerly anticipating the release of Solar Power because I feel like each stage of my life just doesn't make sense until Lord explains it with an album. The album just came out. I feel like on first listen, I didn't really get it, but now I've had time to sit with it, listen to each song in detail and kind of let it ruminate. I am obsessed with it and it is now my new personality. The vibes are immaculate. I hate the winter, can't stand the cold and I love it. It's a soundtrack to my life now. Lord has of course been recommending a lot of books over the years. So many so that we actually had to divide this video into two parts and so this is actually a collab with the queen of booktube Ankali. She is the leader of a new regime and I am a liability. But onto the books, I do have some honorary mentions before we dive in. Firstly, a little play called A Midsummer Night's Dream by an underground indie author called William Shakespeare, which Lord described as very evocative in its depictions of being outside and sunshine and fairies and centaurs sort of frolicking around. The playful tone of A Midsummer Night's Dream as well as the theme of nature is exactly the kind of ethos of the solar power era. So I do have a theory that Shakespeare may have returned and resurrected in the body of this woman from New Zealand. We also have Lord's new Instagram bio, which is a quote from the iconic author Joan Didion. Slouching Towards Bethlehem is a collection of essays, and in here we find the quote that is the source of Lord's bio. The themes are always the same, a return to innocence, the mysteries of the blood, an itch for the transcendental. The essay itself is pretty bleak, and it's a depiction of young people in San Francisco who often feel very disaffected and aimless and lost and confused. Like one child is given LSD by her parents. It's pretty wild in here. And Joan Didion is a big advocate for taking breaks to focus on the creative process and stepping away from the world in order to really, really think. And I think that is exactly what Lord has done in the build up to this album. And finally, this quote from The Writing Life by Annie Dillard, which Lord has referenced in multiple interviews. How we spend our days is of course, how we spend our lives. It's all about prioritizing the present day, living in the moment instead of permanently pursuing productivity. Jeez, that was a tongue twister. And of course, how we spend our days is a huge theme on solar power. So with that out of the way, these are the four books that I'm going to be focusing on in this video. So I've got my work cut out for me. And so for the foreseeable, can you reach me? No. You can't. See you soon. Also, just a reminder that I have a stationery company called Ink Outside the Box and our full collection is now available online. You can head to the link down below to check it out and you can also get 10 pounds off the full bundle. It's currently reduced to 40 pounds instead of 50. So check it out down below. And if you're heading back to school very soon, this academic planner is perfect. Honestly, the only solar power I'm getting in my life right now is this album on loop because London has been overcast for like three weeks. <laughs> Anyways, I don't know if you guys are subscribed to Lord's mailing list, but it's like the best mailing list ever. I love reading it. And in a recent email, Lord recommended this book. This is The Dangers of Smoking in Bed. And let's start by talking about that cover because holy guacamole, she's a stunner. And this is a collection of short stories by an Argentinian author called Mariana Enriquez. And it's all sort of set in and around Buenos Aires. It's a twisted horror. All of the stories are dark and sinister and weird and sometimes wonderful. And I say sometimes because the beginning of this book and the end of this book are great, but I felt like the middle just sort of lost the momentum a little bit. They were a bit naff. In this collection, we have stories about Ouija boards, someone who has a fetish for hearing heartbeats and missing children who start reappearing in public parks years and years after vanishing, but they are exactly the same age as the day that they disappeared. So it's a wild ride. And throughout the book, Enriquez focuses mainly on women and children who have these kind of morbid desires and they are the focal point of these very unsettling 
interesting stories, but they're kind of told with tenderness. You get introduced to the stark ordinariness of their lives before the kind of ominous and ghoulish fantasies and circumstances start to arise. And those aspects kind of creep in. When Lord said glory and gore go hand in hand, this is what she was referring to, I imagine. Because this book is set in Argentina, it also subtly reflects on the military dictatorship that ruled the country from kind of like the late 70s to early 80s. So for instance, we have children whose parents suddenly disappeared and it's kind of a subtle nod to the regime. And we see how that trickles down to impact absolutely everyone in society. Honestly, Lord's big brain energy is on full display here. And even though I know this is objectively very, very good, I found it difficult to read. It's very, very clever, especially in the way that it plays with structure. And of course, Lord is very well known for that. She often subverts the conventions of pop music in her records and she's very experimental. So I can see why she would be interested in this work um, as a writer herself. So I found this intense and difficult, but also amazing. So bit of a mixed review, but um, it was all right. Oh, and I should add that this has been translated from Spanish by Megan McDowell. Okay, so the next book is The Night in Question by Tobias Wolf, which is another short story collection. Heads up, <laughs> you might notice a theme here. And in my humble opinion, the first story in this collection is the best one. It's all about mortality. And basically we have this journalist who writes obituaries and he's told that someone has died. So he writes up the report only to find out that that man isn't actually dead at all. And he finds this out because the man walks into his office very much alive. And he's like, this is so weird because someone phoned me up to say that you had died. And it turns out after a lot of searching that the man himself was the one who phoned. And the reason for that is because he wanted to see how he would be remembered after he died. He wanted to see which of his achievements would be noted, how he would be remembered as a person. And I thought it was just the perfect short story. The overall theme of the collection as a whole is kind of people concealing and confessing things that impact their lives and the moral dilemmas involved in doing so. Wolf really focuses on these fleeting moments and decisions that we make that end up having collateral damage or really impacting the way that we live our lives from that moment onwards. And Lord actually recommended this way way back when she was promoting her first album on a Reddit Q&A. And I can definitely see how Pure Heroine is also fascinated with these moments that shape our lives. You know, we see Lord at the edge of glory. She's at the precipice of huge success and coming of age. So did I enjoy this book? Yeah. Yeah, at times, yes. I personally find short story collections quite difficult because they don't have the same kind of, uh, you don't get hooked in the same way that you do with a novel. And this was quite laborious and made me feel like a massive dummy at times. Also, the cover is wild. Have you ever seen a cover like that? It's kind of like metallic. Um, anyways, on to the next book. Well, what do you know? It's another short story collection. It's fine. It's fine. I'm doing fine. Jack, blink twice if you need help blink three times when you feel it kicking in, am I right? Anyways, this is what we talk about when we talk about love. And this short story collection captures human nature and human conversations so accurately. It's all about people playing cards and drinking and fishing. And all the stories are quite random and obscure. The kind of thing you never knew you needed in your life until it arrived or it was forced upon you by a YouTube video that you were filming. <laughs> and Raymond Carver is an author who Lord has described in this way. So she says he's really minimal with words. He says things in really sparse ways. And I think that really applies to me because writing songs is about being short and sharp. And she's so right. Carver can literally tell you everything you need to know about a person or um, two people's relationships in a single paragraph. And it is masterful. And I feel like Lord too is really good at conveying so much meaning in a single line. And to be honest, this was my favorite short story collection that I read for this video. Like, like, hang this in the Louvre. Down the back, but who cares? It's still the Louvre. All the stories are consistently really strong. And I think it does a lot better with the overall pacing of the collection. However, having said that, if I didn't have to read a single short story collection again for the rest of the year, that would be so fine. That would be absolutely fine with me. I would not be mad. When Lord said, still sane, uh, I can't relate to that. Okay, so we've gone off course a little bit because obviously Lord at the moment is doing her album promo circuit and therefore doing a lot of interviews and giving us the content that we've been starved of for the past four years. And so she's spoken a bit about this book, which I actually read for last week's video on Dua Lipa. And as we know, Mood Ring is a certified bop. 
It's a banger, and it's sort of a parody on wellness culture, written from the perspective of a character who is a consumer of it, and it's heavily inspired by an essay in this book, Trick Mirror, by Gia Tolentino. The essay is called Always Be Optimizing, and it was actually published in The Guardian, so I'll leave a link down below if you want to read it for free. But it basically discusses how women are at the intersection of capitalism and patriarchy. So lots of products and services designed to optimize your life are aimed at women specifically. In this essay, Gia Tolentino talks about how the ideal woman in society society is the sort of wellness guru and the essay goes on a few tangents kind of about athleisure and yoga and fitness classes which are often specifically targeted towards women. Think Gwyneth Paltrow's Goop brand. That's the kind of thing that this is talking about. And she talks about how the outward appearance of these people sort of reflects the values of the marketplace and they sort of become what is essentially a walking advertisement of the ideal life that has been sold to them by capitalism. So while they optimize their lives and continue to do so, they also inspire and encourage other people to do the same so they can be more like the ideal woman. And it's all very complicated, but my point is Mood Ring is sort of a caricature of this ideal woman who optimizes both her own lifestyle but also the image that she performs to the world. And how it's actually a real effort to maintain this and it often involves appropriating certain cultures and doing things that we know are superficial. Like a mood ring, for example, it does not actually tell you what your mood is, and yet we do weirdly place some value on what it tells us. Anyways, the essay itself is interesting, but just so long-winded. Let's just say it's much less exhausting to just listen to mood ring 150 times per day, which is what I have been experimenting with. <laughs> in my opinion, the best essay in Trick Mirror is all about internet culture. It's actually the first essay in the collection, and I hope that Lord has read this. I assume that Lord has read this. It's all about social media being an attention economy, and since Lord has quit social media, I think she would really enjoy that essay. This book as a collection, though, I found generally kind of underwhelming, because a lot of the essays just retell other stories, like there's one just all about the birth of Facebook, and it goes on quite a lot of unnecessary tangents and over-explains quite unimportant things, so I felt a bit lukewarm towards it. In fact, I feel like a lot of these books I'm talking about in this video are very, like, three to four star reviews from me. Maybe Lord's Brain is just simply too powerful <laughs> for me to even comprehend. And now, on to the final book. So last, and very much least, the final book I'm going to be talking about is The Course of Love by Elaine de Botton. And I'm going to say this from like behind the book because I'm nervous, but this is literally one of my least favorite books of all time. I guess you could say I have hard feelings towards it. Banger of a Lord song, by the way. I love the cover, um, but that's kind of where my appreciation for this book ends. I also appreciate this photo of Lord reading the book. I, I, I appreciate that. Elena Baton is a philosopher, and this story is basically about two unhappily married people. And you guys know, normally I love, I cannot get enough of books with unlikable characters and literally no plot. That's my jam. This, however, is an exception to that. Basically, so you have the narrative kind of happening, but then the author interrupts and interjects with these annoying and cringy philosophical observations where he basically just over explains what's going on and I feel like it sort of doubts the intelligence of the reader to not be able to just work that out for themselves. The observations that he makes I feel are mostly kind of obvious and I'd rather that it had been subtly woven into the story so we could get these lessons about sex and relationships from within the story in the same way that like Sally Rooney does but instead he just interrupts the story and tells you as if you're incapable of comprehending it yourself and extracting the details on your own. I don't know, as a piece of art it is pretty unique and it does achieve what it sets out to do. I just personally hated the execution and that's fine because the whole point of reading books is that our opinions are subjective and you may completely disagree. Lord obviously completely disagrees and that's fine. It's all about personal response and for me, personally, <laughs> I didn't vibe with it at all. Having said that, both Lord and Harry Styles have recommended this book, so like, maybe I'm the problem. Maybe I'm the villain here. Anyway, that wraps up this video and I'm secretly very grateful because this has been hard work. 100% my toughest reading list for one of these celebrity book club videos yet. I thought it would be easy because a lot of the books are relatively short, but actually they were all just so intense and complex that I need to lie down. My brain hurts. To be honest though, I do feel like I understand Solar Power a lot more having read these books because I think this album tells lots of different stories. We kind of have different perspectives and characters in songs like Dominoes and Mood Ring. We have the man with the axe, the girl who's seen it all. And I feel like the songs on this album almost are a collation of different short stories, but 
written to music, their many insights into different worlds. So this has been Reading Lord's Reading Recommendations. For part two to this video, head over to Carly's channel. If you enjoy my videos, you will love what she is creating on YouTube right now, so go check her out and maybe we should read each other's favorite books at some point as well. Let me know if you'd like to see that in the comments down below. Until then, have a wonderful day, stream solar power for clear skin, and uh, all the best, stay in touch, Bye bye